Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Boy, Derek, for how much we practice at work, we're pretty awful at volleyball. We are, we're awful. We you know what we're good at? Making brine. That's true. And today we got a video that a lot of people have been requesting, and that is how do you actually make a batch of brine? And the cool thing is it's actually really simple. And uh, we're gonna run you through all the steps and methods today that we use here. Um, personally, you know, at our landscaping company and at our manufacturing facility. So we're going to, uh, to show you we're demonstrating a 450 gallon brine maker today and you're going to notice that there's actually quite a bit of salt up in the top tank and that's completely fine because the biggest question that we get asked is how much salt do you actually add for your brine maker and if you look at the math for um, you know how many pounds are dissolved per gallon of salt brine at 23.3 percent it actually comes out to 2.28 pounds of salt but we don't worry about that because our brine makers use a what we call a batch system so basically all we're looking at is making sure that we get the correct salinity level in our bottom tank on the brine maker. And the built-in hydrometer on the side of the unit will tell us when it's ready to go. So we're gonna start off here by filling the tank up with water and then we're gonna show you once we flip the switch on how the salt dissolves and everything and how we meter the brine itself. You ready, Derek? Yep, let's get to it. So we're lucky that we have a two inch water source going to our brine maker. Some of you guys might have smaller water sources like garden hoses or something like that. So on every brine maker that we send out, we make sure that there's automatic shutoffs. When you hook up your garden hose, it'll fill it up right to the right point and you don't have to sit around and have your hoses in the tank that might fall out. So we have it hooked up right to our manifold here. So what I'm gonna do is turn the valve on and we're gonna fill up our bottom tank full of water. So the reason that we're only filling the bottom tank is because we have such a tremendous amount of water that we don't need to utilize the standard garden hose fills on our brine maker. We actually have so much water that we can fill the bottom tank in about two minutes and we can batch out the bottom tank every single time without having to worry about what's in the top tank. Um, if you watch our video about the Smith Lawn and Landscape brine maker, the 1800 gallon, you can see that they have a storage tank behind it that they draw from and they'll fill their bottom tank and keep their bottom tank full of water because they don't need to use a garden hose to fill the top. So now that we have our bottom tank full of water, we're going to make sure to turn our agitation valve on for the manifold on the top tank. You're going to make sure that your valve is closed for any incoming water coming in and you're going to make sure that your valve is open from the bottom tank to your pump. So now we're going to start the pump up and we're going to start agitating the top tank and let it overflow back into the bottom. Now that we made sure all of our valves are in the right place, we're going to start our brine maker up. So the way that we monitor salt brine with these is this clear tube that basically just recirculates pressed salt brine back to the hydrometer. And it works pretty well. It's a very simple way of monitoring salt brine. Um, basically, we just keep testing what's in the tube and that's getting pumped up through our agitation system. So we're watching this number here. We're already at 20%. It's only been about 35 seconds on this load just because there's so much salt in the, in the tank up top. Um, and we, we're just gonna wait till we see it hit that 23% on the hydrometer itself. And one thing nice is that we always send our hydrometers out painted so it's very easy to see how much, what your, your cutoff point is for the salt brine itself. Once we get closer to our eutectic point at 23.3%, you're gonna notice that it takes just a hair longer. It's very stable to get up to drive it to that point because it actually takes a tremendous amount of agitation to dissolve that much salt in the water. We're floating around about 21% at the moment. Okay, so you can see after about five and a half minutes here, we're at, we're at our 23%. So we're gonna go over and switch our valves around um, so that we can pump directly from the brine maker to our, our storage tank. So as is standard on all of our units, this one pump can make its own brine, it can pump to our storage tanks. And when we look at our valve configuration, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your agitation valve is closed you'll notice that there is a suction valve on the tank itself. Um, you're gonna want that open because we're gonna pump out this bottom tank to our storage tank. You're gonna see that up on top here, there is a line feeding out on the pressure side of the pump, which is gonna feed through the manifold itself and 
we have a little bit different manifold. Everyone's is going to be different depending on what you're doing. Um, but this valve here is going to go to our storage tank. We isolate the suction side um, with the pressure side here. So we're going to feed through the pressure side of the pump to this valve, which is going to go directly to the storage tank. So we can flip our pump on and um, we'll be pumping this batch out and we'll be ready for another. Now that we've pumped that bottom tank out, we can refill the bottom tank again and, and restart the process. We're going to be adding salt through this next uh, batch because we already depleted about 700 pounds of salt in that tank. Um, but the cool thing is that making brine is such a simple process that Derek and I, Derek and I can get back to practicing our uh, volleyball skills.